Hallo, hier ist der Christian vom Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Ich sitze hier gerade bei Ford und habe hier Ken Washington, uh, den Vice President of uh, Research and Advanced Engineering Ford Motor Company, bei mir sitzen. Und ähm, wir werden Ihnen jetzt ganz kurz einfach zu den Ankündigungen von Ford äh, interviewen und ähm, einfach mal ein bisschen euch hier jetzt mitteilen, was Ford in der Zukunft so alles vorhat. So Ken, um, you made a couple of announcements at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. I think um, you specified like your strategy for the smart mobility plan. Do you want to just uh, give us a brief introduction what's going to happen in the next future? Sure. Well, first, let me say we're excited to be here. This is our fifth time coming to Mobile World Congress, and it was the perfect place for us to come to talk about our plan to expand our business to be both an automaker and a mobility company. And our plan to do that is what we call Ford Smart Mobility. It has five elements, connectivity, alternative modes of mobility, autonomous vehicles, data in uh, analytics and insights, and consumer experience. And we shared some news this week on all of those elements. In connectivity, we shared some news about the introduction of SYNC 3 in Europe. SYNC 3 is really going to bring some exciting new connectivity capabilities to our vehicles that we believe our customers are going to love. Uh, options and, and choices in the vehicle for connecting their iPhone through CarPlay or Android phone yep. through um, Android Auto, as well as new, new applications built into SYNC 3 through AppLink. In the mobility space, we announced that we are expanding GoDrive, which is our car sharing service in London, as well yeah. as starting a Go Park mobility pilot also in London. So lots of really great, exciting news along our strategy for helping people move. So um, you said one part of the uh, smart mobility plan is autonomous driving. And Ford announced that it will triple their investment in this part. So what is the strategy, what, you're going, what we are going to see in the future? Sure, actually there's two, two things that we, we've announced. And they're related, but they're different. Uh, the first is that we're tripling our engineering investment in driver assist technologies. Those are technologies that are on our cars today, and they will increasingly be even more capable on our cars that you can buy today, next year, and the year after that. Uh, that tripling will allow us to accelerate that, and we're, uh, we're excited about that because it's going to help our drivers who stay in the loop be a better and safer driver. In parallel to that, we earlier this year announced that we're tripling our, the size of our research fleet for fully autonomous driving. With fully autonomous driving, drivers can be out of the loop, but that means it's much harder to do, which is why we need a large research fleet to test the algorithms to prove them out so that we can truly be confident that the vehicle can handle any scenario that gets thrown at it. And, and do you think when, if, if you're like a, a driver in an autonomous car, do you think that like the technology of variables can somehow influence or help with autonomous driving? Well, we're researching the role of wearables in our uh, recently announced wearables lab that we opened in Dearborn to help us explore how would the driver get back in the loop if a level three autonomous vehicle were to be uh, introduced into the market. We don't know how to do that today, which is why we're aiming yeah. our autonomous vehicle program at level four. That doesn't mean that level three wouldn't be interesting, which is why we're researching the role of wearables. Today it's a research project because we don't know the answers. Yeah. And that's what research is good for. It's to explore exactly. what's possible. And our wearables lab is helping us do that exploration through wearables that might tap you on the, on the uh, wrist or um, help you get re-alerted so you can get back in the loop. Today we think that's too dangerous of a proposition. So we're going straight for level four where the driver will be out of the loop and the car has responsibility from the origination point all the way to the destination. Okay, um, maybe l just like a little bit more detail to the new SYNC 3. So what is the main difference? Because uh, many of our readers already know the SYNC 2 system, which already is in the, in the vehicles. Yes. But what's, what's like the new features of SYNC 3? We think users are going to love SYNC 3 because it builds on a lot of feedback and, and insight that we gain from having over 10 million, actually 15 million users 
with Sync 2 uh, today. Uh, the first big difference you'll notice is that we've reintroduced physical buttons into the vehicle. That was based on direct feedback from our customers. The second big thing that you'll notice is that the interface in the vehicle in Sync 3 uh, introduces very familiar touch and feel, capacitive touch, pinch and zoom uh, capabilities that we have on our smart devices. And then the third big change is we've improved the responsiveness with, with faster hardware, better voice recognition, and then last but not least, we've added the, the integration of Android Auto and CarPlay. So a lot of changes in Sync 3, which is why we think That's people great. are going to love it. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Das war Christian und Mr. Ken Washington vom Mobile World Congress in Barcelona.